So let's go into the accounts payable aging. Let's look at the summary first. This is probably the most common layout that we would expect. Similar to the accounts receivable aging, it's breaking out the accounts payable by how current it is. So now we've got our vendors. This is the current amounts. These are the one to 30 days past due, 31 to 60, 61 to 90. So obviously, if we look at this and we start to say, okay, we've got some amounts that are way past due, then those are the ones that, that we would, you would think need to jump on and be paying. From a cash flow perspective, our goal often would be to hold on to the cash as long as possible, paying as late as possible, as long as we're not giving up penalties for doing that or interest charges or fees like that. And as long as we're not annoying our vendors, we wanna have good relationships with our vendors. So oftentimes if you get too aggressive on your cash management strategy, then you can annoy the people you're trying to do business with and that's not uh, really good either. But that gives you that added level of detail. It's probably not as important a report, this AP aging as the accounts receivable aging because the accounts receivable aging has that added layer where we don't know which customer's actually gonna pay us, right? We gotta, we're, we're trying to get the customer to fulfill their side of the bargain with the accounts receivable. And we, we would have to value how much of the receivables we think maybe wouldn't be collectible uh, in that case. In this case, this is our side of the table. We're the one that needs to fulfill our side of the transaction. The vendor has done what they're supposed to do. We need to fill, fulfill our side. So it's not like we have this estimate of how much of these payables are not going to be payable or anything like that. We're the ones paying them, right? So we're trying to determine which ones need to be paid uh, and when. So that's why the accounts payable aging summary might not be as you know common a report, even though the format looks quite the same as the accounts receivable aging report or one reason. If I go back up top, you can change the number of periods and, some, and so on in a similar way as the receivable aging. 